Hello there, friends and beloved human family. Tis I, the fasting faster, fastest faster in the land. I'm at the True North Health Center here in Santa Rosa, California, and it was another beautiful day, and it is day four out of my attempted 10-day fast. Uh, we'll see where that goes. This was originally looking like a five to seven day fast that I wanted to push to 10 days and the doctor who I'm seeing has uh, agreed that that's quite likely, that, that it depends on my bioindicators, in other words, what my body is saying uh, is working for me. Uh, so we'll see. But uh, I wanted to get that in because I haven't really been mentioning that before and I keep saying 10 day, 10 day, 10 day, but 10 days is the goal or the, 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 the longest it will be. Uh, but I want to spend as much time as I can not eating so that instead of constantly focused on digestion, my body can focus on healing. Well, let's do it the other way. Cleansing, detoxification, and healing. I like to do them in that order because cleansing is just the most simple getting rid of stuff, clearing out, detoxification, clearing out the real poisons, and, um, and healing, of course, is uh, really what I want to do because that's the long-term stuff. But um, it, a lot of it is about kind of starving the bacteria in the body, the gut biome, so that I can reset it and restart it. Now, on that note, today I actually got a uh, a bunch more test results that finally came in from my blood and stool samples for, from a few days ago. Um, before I get to that, I wanted to mention one more thing about fasting and the reason you do it and the reason I'm doing it is a palate reset and a reset of neuroadaptation. Let me explain those really quickly. So uh, the palate reset should be more obvious. Our, literally like our tongues, our taste buds, our palate gets kind of coated is what they call it where you've, you've eaten in restaurants where they put a ton of salt, fat, and sugar in their food because that's how you sell food in a restaurant. I know that. I'm a restaurateur. Uh, this is no shameless uh, promotion of my restaurant, Little Gem. I'm not the Little Gem. I'm six foot three, but it's funny the looks I get in the comments. I get wearing a shirt that says, Little Gem. Oh, you're a Little Gem. No, I'm a big guy, but Little Gem's my restaurant. <laughs> so anyway, restaurants, we have two locations to serve you in San Francisco. But um, uh, I know that having studied hotel and restaurant management, that we are in business to sell salt, fat, and sugar. It's not about healthy food. It, it, you, you almost cannot get healthy food in a restaurant unless you told them, uh, make me some plain rice with steamed vegetables, no salt, please, no butter, no oil. That'd be about it. And you know, that's a kind of a hard thing, hard thing to, to really eat too often is just plain rice made with water and no salt or butter or anything in it and just plain steamed vegetables. Uh, we certainly don't serve those things at uh, Little Gem, uh, but we do have delicious, wonderful food. So, um, my point about resetting the palate is that when you eat all these salts, fats, and sugars, your taste buds adapt to them, and I'll get to the neuroadaptation in a minute, which is similar. And then when you have something that doesn't have a great quantity of those things, it tastes very bland, and it's boring to eat, and it's hard to shovel it in, and you feel like eating is a chore. And so, um, I want to reset the palate so that I'm not always craving the salt, fat, and sugar, and that I'm not always um, thinking things are bland without them, and so slathering the food I make and uh, with those things, even if I'm not at a restaurant. So then the neuroadaptation element is similar. Uh, a common term for neuroadaptation, same concept, is tolerance. So we know this, I think, most often as a drug term. You develop a tolerance to it, and then you need more to get the same feeling from the drug. But neuroadaptation occurs with eating as well, of course, and, and um, it's a dopamine response in the brain issue. You get accustomed to high sugar, high fat, salty foods, and then when you, when you don't have them, it's a disappointment, it's a letdown, nothing tastes as good, it loses its sheen and luster and deliciousness and, and excitement. So this way, if you don't eat anything for a while, whoo boy, you can imagine, 
anything will taste good, even if it's plain steamed vegetables and plain white rice cooked in water. Uh, I keep emphasizing that water factor because actually when I make rice, most every time I use a homemade vegetable stock in it. So I do recommend upping the ante for flavor with things like vegetable stocks that have a lot of rich onion, garlic, herb, vegetable flavors. And uh, another little trick, oh, I'm going to let the secret out of the bag, uh, is the oatmeal. When you make the oatmeal, find a nice tea that's a really pungent, flavorful tea that you like. And instead of making your oatmeal with plain water, make it with the tea. Just brew the tea first and then use that to make your oatmeal. Really ups the flavor profile ante there. And uh, we're, we're going to be pretty focused on no caffeine uh, moving forward because that's a powerful stimulant drug, uh, highly addictive. And so uh, I haven't had caffeine in uh, at least a month and I do look forward to just being, staying fully clean of caffeine has a nice ring to it anyway. <laughs> Clean to caffeine. So uh, a nice herbal tea, nice something flavorful. I love a rooibos, which is red bush tea from South Africa. And um, they make a lot of nice flavors. Madagascar, vanilla, rooibos tea is a good one. So it makes a great oatmeal. Uh, anyway, just a little couple comments there and thoughts about up in the flavor profile, Annie, on the food that we make so that we can enjoy the food without being so saturated with salt, fat, and sugar. So that's the neuroadaptation is you go to baseline nothingness and then any the, the supposedly I talked I've been talking to a lot of people here and many who have been coming out of their fast and even as I've mentioned in previous vlog entries longer fast of 13 days 18 days etc and boy one lady said oh I had a piece of the honeydew melon it was too sweet it was like candy bar honeydew so you can imagine after not eating for that long it it takes on a whole new meaning so that's a big part of the fasting is the the palate reset and the neuroadaptation so um i guess since i mentioned it i will move forward to the doctor report and how that all went and and why i'm i've i've sort of been reminded of the reality that this was an intentional 10-day water only fast and that it, it's not guaranteed it's not necessarily the, the full-on plan although I'm, I'm pretty much planning to go 10 but we'll see how that goes um, so my blood test came back today and my stool sample results came back today and guess what they all look good turns out i'm pretty darn healthy after all now again i still have these little funky symptoms that one of my doctors, I have many doctors now, at least three doctors now. Uh, one of my doctors has, and I'm talking like kind of primary one, my main doctors. But one of them has told me that it was very likely all of the, the little symptoms I've had have been were related. And that her suspicion was a candida overbloom. We all have candida in our body. It's a, a fungal yeast bacteria thing. And that it's okay in appropriate quantities but if you have the overbloom of candida now you start to get these issues the acne toenail fungus little rashes itchy rashes on the skin even the headaches or what else just all that kind of stuff so um the candida it's interesting because the lab came back and said well we don't have the testing antigen thing whatever uh, to be able to do it and we don't expect to get any soon so they couldn't do the one full-on test for it, but they did two other related tests about candida, and they were both negative, low range, uh, low numbers, normal range. So the doctor was, was satisfied with that, and he's just not, definitely not uh, pointing as an indicator to a candida overbloom. So that might not be it. Yay, that's great news. I don't have a candida overbloom uh, because from what I've read, it can be difficult to shake and take a long time and you have to avoid a lot of different foods. Um, I wasn't looking forward to, to really having to plug through, you know, push through all that effort to, to rid myself of the overbloom and get the, the gut biome back in balance in that respect. So yay for that, but on the other hand, well then I don't have anything to explain these, these random symptoms and mainly the one issue I've been having is the gut thing, the constant bloating and the waking up early hours, five in the morning and feeling kind of yucky in the stomach. Um, so 
However, I did mention to a couple of the doctors here, you see two doctors every day here. They make rounds, they see you every day. And I was, I've mentioned to a couple of them and they said, well, fasting works, works miracles on that kind of stuff. You might be surprised. You Just by doing the fast for an extended period, you come back out of it and, and you might not find that you have the stomach issues anymore. Uh, I'm certainly slimming down here. My weight was down to 155 today. Uh, so uh, when I came, the day I came down here, it was 165 that morning. So I've lost 10 pounds uh, in, in a week's time. So interesting, but, uh, no worries here. I'm totally down for that. As I mentioned in yesterday's vlog, my body mass index is totally fine. Totally in a normal range. Uh, doctor is totally comfortable going down to a 16 to 18 on the BMI index. And, um, I'm still got a 19 and a half, 20. I'm sure I haven't looked up what this actual weight is, but very near 20. So no worries there. Still doing the, the ketosis and, and burning ketones as opposed to chomping away at any of the muscle tissue. So um, that was basically the doctor report. It, it was all good, all positive, no negatives. All the stool samples were neg, 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 neg. No parasites, no blood in the stool, no white blood cells, none of that stuff. Um, there's no protein sloughing off in the urine or any of those. So. Um, that's all fine, although I did the urinalysis back, uh, gave the sample last Thursday. So I, had I even started fasting then? I don't think so. I started on, on uh, Saturday. Uh, yeah, Friday, Saturday. But um, yeah, Friday I did juice, Saturday I started fasting. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and now Tuesday is my fourth day of fasting. So I'm a pretty darn healthy guy. People were right. Everyone who said, you're healthy, why are you doing that? But again, I do want to get to the healing part and I want to kickstart the healing on this lung condition I've, I've obviously had for a while now, coughing up the black stuff, smoking all that, you know what? So I'm, I'm glad that I have not smoked since July. I'm not coughing up anything. It's been a, a bit, it's been a few weeks for sure, at least since I've coughed up anything black. And, uh, but, but three, medical intuitive healers have, have told me there is something going on in the right lungs. So I want to kickstart that healing. And this is clearly going to help me do that for sure. And so um, that's the other big one I was working on here. And then the arthritis in the hip, uh, just excellent, excellent results for many people uh, with fasting uh, for arthritis. So there's that. And um, that's the doctor report. Uh, I, I am feeling great. I, my energy is fine, really. I've been staying, again, very sedentary and chill and, and not exerting myself too much, although I, I worked most of the day today. Um, ooh, sorry about that. I'm kicking the tripod there. Uh, exciting news uh, about uh, Seoul and uh, Kip, what Kip and I are doing. Uh, we are going to be going down to the Conscious Life Expo in Los Angeles at uh, the Los Angeles Airport Hilton. And uh, thank you to our dear Jordina for pretty much insisting that we come down there. This is your audience. This is your people. You got to come and the people need you. And okay. Okay. They need us. We'll come. We'll come. I'm, I'm, my purpose is to inspire, educate, and share. These are people who are already looking to make changes in their lives, in the world. And uh, we have some ideas that might help them reach for the stars. So I um, spent the day working on bunch of stuff for the that conference and preparing all kinds of different stuff. Kip and I got on a long call. We also booked our trip down there and booked all our accommodations. So uh, it's been a little busy day. And actually, I will uh, admit here that after doing a lot of that work, I did start to feel a tiny, tiny twinge of a little funky gut, like a almost like a whoa kind of gut. Uh, on a scale of one to 10, I would call it like a three. And it lasted for, God, less than a minute, maybe a minute. And then I, I shut the computer, I stood up, I had some sips of water, and that was actually right before the doctor came in. I was on the phone with my dad. Hey, Dad. <laughs> one of my biggest fans. And so uh, the one person who's seen all my YouTube videos, it's my dad. So thanks for the support. And for all of you, thanks for the support. So I had a little twinge of a stomach goofy. I mentioned it to him on the phone and um, doctor came in while I was on the phone with him. I told him that he said, 
you, you, it's amazing you haven't had that already. It's just par for the course when you're not eating. Um, so it didn't last at all. When the doctor came in, I said it was down to a one. Um, maybe it's been there ever since at a one. So totally fine. Um, I did get out in the sun for a bit today and uh, you saw my sun picture if you're, you're following on Facebook from a few days ago. That's how I'm getting my vitamin D. One tiny, tiny slight deficiency in the blood test was my vitamin D and um, uh, uh, that's quite common for, for people eating the plant-based diet and um, the way to get it is get out in the sun and I'm committed to doing that. I've, I've made myself a daily list. Uh, I have my to-do lists that I keep in my notes on my phone and on my computer and I have a saying I'd love to share because I'm here to inspire, educate, and share. This saying is very powerful. If it's on the list, you can't miss. So when I think of something I want to do or remember, I put it on the list. So I now have a, like created, just while I'm here, I created a list of daily stuff I want to be sure and do, exercises and play guitar every day, just like my friend Giz told me, play an hour every day and do some writing every day, and do this vlogging every day. And the other thing is to get some sun every day so I get my vitamin D. And that way you can go for much shorter periods if you do it regularly. So I uh, just take a shirt off and go out in the garden for like 15 minutes with the shirt off. It's probably sufficient. And my, my, I expect my vitamin D to go zoop right up. So today I did get out in the sun. It's a beautiful day here, 63 degrees. But I tell you, when you're sitting there exposed in the direct sunlight, it's, it feels like you're on a sandy beach in a tropical environment. So I did that and it was great. Um, I am pleased to report I, since I've been here, I've had no... Um, toe or foot cramps. I, I get those at night sometimes, not always, every couple weeks maybe on average, but since I've been here, none. That's good news. Uh, I did have some more insomnia last night. I did have the, the predictable nightmare and uh, it wasn't all about food this time. I didn't dream about food at all. In fact, I've thought a le less about foods today, which is nice. Maybe that's calming down after a few days, but um, yeah, uh, just just another goofy nightmare and fine that was that um but i did have a super productive day which is great and um that's pretty much the report i think on on me and what's going on uh here with me and everything uh as a my kind of reminder i think i mentioned it in yesterday's vlog but i want to let everyone know i attended a very compelling informative fun lecture with dr alan goldhammer the founder of true north health center yesterday and, and uh, i did capture video it's from my iphone on a tripod the audio is terrible, I'm sorry, but I did post it to our YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube and uh, find the Soul Documentary channel, it's just a little tricky because if you search Soul Documentary, we don't come up. But if you search for Dr. Goldhammer, G-O-L-D-H-A-M-E-R, one M, Goldhammer, and you be sure and have the date, 12 slash 30 slash 19, I'm sure you'll be able to go right to the, the video of that. And it's a good lecture. It's a powerful, compelling lecture packed with good information. Uh, I loved every word. He's funny. He's insightful. He's done his homework, done his research. They've written scientific papers here. They do research. See, the reason he, he acknowledges in that video, the reason they set up True North Health Center wasn't just specifically to treat individual people, but to do research. They have a lab set up here. It's really exciting what's going on. They're working on getting this very fancy machine for measuring things in the body. It, it really checks, um, I think it measures like arteries and when you have clogged arteries and how much cholesterol buildup is in the arteries. Um, so valuable stuff there. But if you watch that video, you'll hear him explain all about it. But he, again, he's funny and he's cool. And there were a lot of questions from the audience and he answered all of them beautifully. Um, hopefully you'll be able to hear people's questions on the audio. It's just literally the built-in mic on the iPhone. Meh. But crank up the volume and look and learn. Um, I think that's it. Thanks for joining me. Day four of my water-only fast and all is well. And so far, I certainly highly recommend fasting. I recommend True North Health Center. 
Dr. Goldhammer is one of my great heroes. I committed to make a significant donation to True North Foundation uh, to help them with their work. I think this is a very valuable message to spread. I want to help spread it myself, and I want to help facilitate their spreading of these messages as well. So check it out. Their website is healthpromoting.com. I should link that in the the comments on the, I mean, the, um, what do they call that? The info, the details on this video. I haven't been doing that. In fact, I can go back and add that to the previous videos, because why not? It's good info. So that's what's up over here. Peace and love to y'all. Thanks again for joining. I'll be back tomorrow for day five, water only fasting. What can I say? I'm doing it, and I'm loving it.